good evening. So it is the Saturday before Mother's Day. Uh, I apologize for being a little bit late. Something came up and it needed to be handled at the time. Um, but I, we're here now. We're going to start streaming now. Um, so today we're going to be painting a rose for Mother's Day. Um, part of this is because I got back from Louisiana. Oh, give me one sec. That's, a, that's how we know it. It went live. Um, words. So part of what I chose for this week is because I literally got back from Louisiana yesterday at 8 p.m. Um, I didn't have any internet access all last week and I was very preoccupied with my mom's surgery. So um, I was really kind of on the fence about whether we were going to have a stream this weekend or not. But since we didn't do one last Saturday because I was driving to Louisiana, we will do one today instead. So I have my rose reference up on the screen. I also believe I, I've linked it to my partners on Patreon. Um, it's like a photo pack and the reference is one that I took at Cheekwood. So we can use this for watercolor painting. I'm also gonna go ahead and bring up a larger version of it on my screen. So I have something to uh, see a little bit better since that tends to be a little bit tiny. And uh, what I would recommend doing if you are actually doing this as a Mother's Day present is either doing it on um, like card watercolor paper, but I wanted to work with cotton rag for this. Um, or you can use it on like five by seven or four by six. I'm doing uh, six by eight today because I was kind of working with what I've got. And I hope all of you are healthy. I hope you're all in good spirits. I hope you're all doing as well as can be expected these days. So the materials I'm using today, uh, I'm going to use some colored lead. So I have color Eno lead in pink, yellow, blue, green. You don't have to use all these colors, but I'm gonna use the lineless watercolor technique. You could do this in graphite if you want and just clean up your line art. It's really up to you. And part of the sell for this is that it's going to be just three colors. So we have a opera rose. This is a Holbein opera. It's a Quinn opera. And then I haven't quite decided what direction I wanted to go in with the phthalo and what direction I wanted to go in with the cooler yellow. So I have um, two different Holbein watercolors. We have phthalo blue yellow shade, which is a, like a very bright phthalo. And then we have a less intense peacock blue. And then in the yellows, we have cores, uh, benzamide, wow. I'm never gonna be able to say this off the cuff. Benzamidazolone yellow. Benzamidazolone yellow. Sorry about that. And then we also have um, an M grams azo yellow. So what I want to do is I want to take a minute and swatch these to find which ones I'm actually going to use for the stream. Uh, we're also going to use a ceramic palette. So I'm just going to grab, I keep off camera, of course, I keep um, watercolor paper scraps for just this purpose. So I'm going to go get a cup of clean water and some brushes and I'll be right back. Letting me know. Genuinely, so thank you. Yeah. I don't know why. Sure. I'll look into it. So Joseph just pointed out that notifications for this stream are for some reason turned off. I switched it back over to not for kids recently. I'm sorry. I'm not upset at you. I'm like 
I'm going to look into this and I'm going to be really, really annoyed at um, YouTube for switching me back over if that's what happened. I'm hoping it's just this stream got switched by accident. But I apologize for that. They don't make it easy to be a creator sometimes. Yeah, all the, they do host it. You're right. They do host it. But then they penalize you for making all ages content that is uh, general audience appropriate. Which is what they said they really, really wanted at one point. Huh? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. If you're super popular, though, you can you can do a lot of things. And uh, they'll kind of either aid in a bet or turn a blind eye. It is. It is quinacridone opera. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be hard to paint. We'll see how well <laughs> I do tonight. And I do apologize if I seem a little bit downbeat or off my game. Um, I got some upsetting news that I'm not really in the mood to talk about on stream, like at eight. So that's a little bit why I'm late. And it's also a little bit why I might be more downbeat than normal. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to go with the phthalo blue rather than the peacock blue since it's a bit more intense. And I'll go with the yellow I can't pronounce, the core yellow. Or rather the yellow that takes me six tries to pronounce. And I'll put that to the side so we have more room. And I think... What I'll do once we finally get rolling is I'll bring the camera in a bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw our rows. Ooh, got to find my reference. So what's going on with you guys? What's new with y'all? I should, I should say, since I've been talking about my mom's surgery a lot, the bad news is not actually anything to do with that. She's doing well. Uh, her surgery was on Tuesday, and she didn't even have any pain on Wednesday. So, and it's not even like, like bad, bad news. It's just kind of like womp womp to hear. Okay, so I drew a sort of oblong shape that kind of encompasses, let's see, I think my reference is to my left side, so it kind of encompasses the whole of the shape and that kind of allows me to block in what I'm doing. And then we have kind of the center of the rose where the petals are kind of curled up and around the center. And then we have the exterior of the rose where our petals have splayed out a bit more. How yeah. They, yeah, they can turn to mush really easily. You said the sentence pigment number rather than name. Oh, this? Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's see if I can find it. It is PY154. So it, that's uh, the name it goes under is probably indicative of the pigment in it or the der derivation of the pigment. Hey. Oh, it's okay. It's just something that needs to be worked on. In an hour, I'll see it as an opportunity for growth. And I'm also going to switch over to this yellow that is going to be difficult to see. Eyebrows, 
Oh, you have any bad villagers? They've, um, they've really kind of nerfed how villagers behave. I've never had any awful, like, I even love, I don't generally like the snooty villagers, but I love the gruff villagers, and the, uh, I guess they haven't had any, like, rude types since, what, city folk? I've been able to play it some, but not as much as, as, I don't want to say not as much as I would like, because I really don't want to be spending all that time on Animal Crossing. Uh, but my, my village and my house is still a disaster. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. The problem with time traveling is it makes, if you're doing turnips, it makes them rot. Well, they knew that because he was doing turnips. I mean, I, I am not doing turnips. Uh, mostly because, like, Daisy May has not made it to my village yet. I don't know. She's, her design is so cute. Um, I would do turnips just to have her come visit. But she hasn't, so I don't have any turnips. So I'm not doing turnips. I have a full village, though. Oh, okay. Also, I like um, go like I like how the game has us attract villagers. There wasn't anyone other than Marshall, huh? Without paying yeah, well. There wasn't anybody other than, like, Marshall and Gladys, maybe, who I really was like, oh, I really want them in my village. And then, from game... You don't want Coco in your life. I, I already have Bangle in my life. You've been sarcastic. My name is Coco. I know. Well, I don't want that... I don't need another Coco. I've got one. Oh, you can bring it over if you want. We bought some, I hate to say it's knockoff Pocky. Hold the, wait, hold the box. Oh, you don't have the box in your hand. Yeah, right it's right. like Biscolata or something. And it's, um, it's like hazelnut fake Pocky. And I like anything hazelnut flavored. But they sat in a mailbox in Luling all afternoon. And they got horribly, horribly <laughs> melted. So that's, that's what we've got. You know, frankly, Nutella, because it smells very strongly of Nutella. Nutella is not at all shelf-stable. It will uh, separate out with any heat. No, no. No, I have a full village now. Um, Gruff and Klaus moved in, so I'm at capacity, which is weird because this is on, like, a, a console, and I feel like I had more villagers in New Leaf. I appreciate the offer, though. She's a sweetheart. I have Phoebe, who is basically, like, her soul sister. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. I have not been walking you guys through any of it today so what I'm trying to decide is I'm trying to decide compositionally if I want to add any greenery to the background well that's another thing I'm trying to consider is how I want to handle the background I mean, realistically, we could do something, Brusho, yeah. Uh, we could do something, 
brush that takes is a huge mess. Uh, we could do something very simple and um, more atmospheric, more abstract. weird like the way family gatherings are always kind of weird or weird because like covid's still going on and there's kind of this weird dichotomy going on between like you want to see people but you also know it's dangerous but you also haven't seen people in a really long time But Calvin, you do such beautiful water, and water is the one thing that I really, really struggle with. Well, I say one thing. There's many things, but water is one of the ones that I really struggle with. So for the leaves, I'm sketching in teardrop shapes, and then I'm adding serrations to them, kind of going from the tip the outer edge of the flower into the stem itself. Can you still collab with uh, Crime Phase? And I would love to. Although I think he, <laughs> he would fuss at my uh, terrible lack of knowledge vocabulary is very lacking i know he draws too though so i don't know if he even would need an outside artist to do it he'd do it himself it's a collab, not... sure 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 you do everything well okay so i have kind of the basic sketch in place I'm going to get rid of some of these excess lines. You know, I found out the other day that it takes a, the, a human about 45 seconds to get over a shock. For all my life, I always felt like... Um, because when I when something shocking in a negative way happens, I always am kind of stunned for a while, and I don't necessarily know how to react. Or all right, so if you get if oh, okay, I'll fix that. If you get motion sickness, close your eyes because I'm going to bring the camera in, and hopefully, oh, come on, please. Oh. Keep your eyes closed. I'll tell y'all when. Cover it with your hand. I can't. I need both hands to move the stand. But then even when I do that, it still wants to uh, pull itself back up. Okay. And then I'm going to fix autofocus. I thought I turned that off. But today is just one of those days. Ah, it is not off. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully that is better. So what I want to start with is I want to start with some of our PY-154. And I don't normally work from tubes. I usually work from half pans. So this will take a little bit of adjustment on my part. But basically what I want to do is I want to create a yellow background wash. 
and then we're gonna layer in some of the blue on top of it so that we get some optical mixing going on. I'm also gonna go ahead and see what my color looks like because I can also start with the center of the rose since watercolor does have a tendency to take a while to dry. So for those of you who have pets, how are your pets holding up? I bet they're happy to be able to spend more time with you. Bowie's been a real pooper lately. His feel away ran out, so he's back to his bad old habits. So with flowers, as Calvin pointed out, it's really easy to kind of lose track of where you are and it can be really easy for it to kind of turn to mush. Oh, okay. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Um, I've done, um, a long time ago, I did a watercolor space tutorial, but I'm definitely open to doing more of that. It is good. It's just all melted and gross. Yeah. Uh, Feather said they got here at least. Yeah. Hey, Feather. I got a late start today, so we actually haven't. You've been going about 20 minutes. Yeah, we haven't been going that long. Calvin said they got motion sickness, but they're not sensitive. Just the long fast motion. Yeah. Will make them bark. Ooh. Or play you know, I have the same problem. And then when it comes to VR. Um, it doesn't make me sick while I'm doing it, but after I take the headset off, I get really nauseous. So for this tutorial, I think I'm not going to worry too much about shading the rows since we're working with three colors. You could definitely mix up a shadow color from Thalo Quinn Magenta. Well, no, it's Quinn Opera and a yellow. Oh, Gazoon Tight. But I'm concerned that that's going to kind of muddy it a bit, so I'm not going to do that. We will see. That will be, a, that's an excellent question. My head is kind of not as in the game as I would like tonight, so. But maybe I'll get into it. You know, you guys know how it is. Like, as you're making art, sometimes when you're, you're working on something and you're, something happens and uh, it takes you a while to get in the zone, but then you do get in the zone and it kind of all meshes. And then... Sometimes you don't get in the zone. <laughs> so we'll see. But I will be honest with you guys about it in that way. Those of you who also sort of struggle with that problem can... I don't know. Know, know where it turned on and off, I guess. Is... When people take pictures of flowers, they usually do soft kind of focus. So yeah. Um, I might just put the detail in the leaves that are directly attached to the flower, but I, 
Right. I didn't want to overwork the background. I wasn't sure if indie meant all the leaves or uh, the background leaves. Yeah. Uh, and you also said it had a soap lane. Aww. And it said cinnamon is a little wilier than usual. And then she started pulling the cloth boxes out of consoles to get her toys. Ooh. She's a smart baby. So you have a cat who's willing to earn her keep. I try to put the camera on Bowie and he was like, nah, nah. he gets all squirrely and weird. So um, earlier today, Allie and Tanner came by and picked up some masks and some other stuff that my mom had made. And they, Allie brought back some of my art supplies in a bag, and they're still in the bag. And Bowie has been like very curious about it, not in like a territorial way either, but just like in a, oh, what's this? I smell cats. Uh, Feather said they're interested in how you use two colors fresh instead of dried pens. Sure. So um, I'm applying just a little bit to my ceramic palette. And what I would recommend is using either a more open ceramic palette or the ones that don't have like the rounded wells, like our plastic palettes do. They have the flat bottom or ones that have the larger open surfaces. Or if you have it, a white ceramic plate and just do like a little dot. Like, so what I'll do is I will just kind of, I'm not going to do it right now, but just kind of like squeegee it off so I don't put a big dollop of paint. Cause I'm, my problem with working from tubes and you guys probably see that when I'm using gouache is I tend to waste a lot of paint. And I mean, yeah, I could leave it on the palette. And when I'm doing like a series of things that have the same color palette, I'll definitely do that. But I use these palettes for, you know, kind of a variety of different things. So it's better for me not to put like a healthy dollop on it, but kind of. And then like for this, because I want a stronger color. I'll just take some of my wash water that I use to apply kind of that diffuse background wash and I'll just add water as I go. I don't do it more often mostly because it's not at all convenient <laughs> for how I paint. I feel like if you've got cat hair floating around or dog hair or any any kind of uh, animal ferret hair animal dander dust so if you work like in, an, in a very dry environment that has a lot of atmospheric dust this doesn't work so well for us the nice thing about the half pans is we can shut the palette at least and pretend like we're keeping it cleaner okay so what i'm going to want to do is and i don't want to do too much because ooh, see i did too much um I want the pink to be the most striking thing in the image. She scream. She scram. Heidi is a uh, way more comfortable with the liquid watercolors than I am. So Heidi might be able to help you out with those a little bit better. I use them sometimes, but I, yeah, well, you know, every time I use them, I feel like my art looks really fake. I'm not saying like synthetic, like um, the colors are too bright. Is that bright or too bright? Both. And I mean, even if I water it down a lot, I mean, part of my problem is I'm trying to use them almost exclusively. So like the better way to do it would be to, you know, use like a mix. Oh man, that's rough. Yeah. Cause they're, they're harder to breathe through. I mean, it's important that we wear them. I'm not at all saying we shouldn't, but um, when Joseph and I go for walks, we wear our masks and I always end up having 
breathing problems because it's just so much hard. And it's not even like a fancy mask. It's just a, a pleated mask. There's not even like a filter in it. Uh, Yakub Balani says hi. Hi, good evening. Oh, yeah, um, probably just these coming right off the stem, but we'll see. Uh, right now, I'm trying to do like a fake soft focus effect. Said, didn't want to intrude in the stream, but since you mentioned it first, thanks so much for the Cajun care package. I'm going to eat good for sure. It's tasty spicy stuff. Ah, no problem. That was supposed to be, <laughs> supposed to be a Christmas present, but, uh... <laughs> It's been a while. E. Uh, Tim is, uh, excited, excited for the cookies. Good. Oh, the those are pralines, right? Uh, are they pralines or are they cookies? Yeah, they're pralines. Pralines are so good. It's funny to me that they come like Louisiana is known for its pralines because they don't like to set up if it's too humid. Well, Yeah. I mean, it can be reactivated. Like you could put um, like saran wrap on top of it or even like a plate, just anything to keep the dust out. Uh, no, I didn't. And that's a good, that is a good question. Thank you. So I've been doing a lot of watercolors, not for the channel lately, but for uh, volume two. And one of my favorite mixes right now is the optical mix of like a phthalo blue and a cool yellow and then layering them because you get this really uh, clean kind of green. And uh, the opera rose is just such a, a natural color for painting roses. Definitely not a uh, light fast. I mean, the Quinn one might be, but generally Opera Rose is not. A Quinn Magenta would work really well for this also. Or even if you wanted like an Alizarin Crimson. Gonna have to go change that water in a little bit. It's a little bit dirty right now. And then I'm working on a cotton rag paper because I really wanted to get these kind of softer wet into wet blends, especially as you see with the edges. Like I'm gesturing the wrong way. If you see, as you see with the edges of the rose, um, it has this kind of feathered look that you can get from doing a mix of like direct application and then feathered blending. Oh, yeah, you can you can machine wash it, but I've been hand washing mine uh, with either dish soap, you can use baby shampoo. You probably could use hand soap. I don't know if you want to smell hand soap all day because they tend I, to be. I use hand soap and I don't smell hand soap. It doesn't bother you? No. I know a lot of hand soaps tend to have a lot of perfume in them. I smell more dish soap when you use dish soap than I do hand soap when I use hand soap. Mm. Uh, Calvin said they hate wearing the mask as well since they walk fast. Makes them feel asthmatic attacks can happen yep. anytime. Yup, I get that. Yes. Uh, and Indy says they like the soft focus effect better than the chemical look. Yeah, it's actually, it'll be interesting to see how it looks when it dries, but it's turning out pretty, so. Oh, I'm so tempted to do some over here, but 
Maybe I should not, or maybe I should. Yeah, I got a thumbs down before the stream even started. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, I guess they're mad that I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just on principle. They don't like me and it's on principle. That's okay. I wonder if you can find out who thumbs down things through the API. I don't want to know. That's their right to not like things. I'm not, I would not want to take that away. Oh, that sounds, that sounds like it could get real, real creepy real fast. With like. It sounds like it'd be a great service though. Uh, it pay for stop it. it. Of course they would. Please don't put that out in the nether because then there's going to be like, there's some channels that are very vitriolic that I would not want to cross who would probably pay for such things. <laughs> Are they paying y'all better right now or no? I know that's a nervy question to ask, but that's like been my main concern. I really feel like the people who are working right now deserve extra pay for having to go out. Okay. So while it's still kind of wet, I kind of want to do more Thalo. So I didn't do that originally because um, that thing that happened earlier was making my ADHD really bad, and I I could pro I'm feeling a lot better now, so I probably can can pop it out. Pop it on out. See, that's like the beautiful thing about art and hanging out online too, is like. Well, yeah, you. Well, you know, you can start out by not feeling like doing it, and then as you get into it and you start to like, or at least. Be, that's most things. That's actually sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thing, but the thing about art is, it's such a hit or miss. Music too. Like it can either. Your mood can either really make it better, like even if you're in a bad mood, that can go into it and make it better, or it can make it a complete disaster and a little bit of a waste of your materials. Yeah. It's like hanging out with friends. Like, yeah, they might cheer never, you up. Yeah, you could never not hang out with friends because you don't feel like it. But, well, I don't know because... because you're going to there's there's no there's been times where I was in a really really just having like a really bad day and I was invited out and I was like well if I go out I'll feel better and then my bad mood ended up being contagious I mean if you like got news that a family member is dying or something that's one thing but if you just are in a sour mood then I think it depends on the on the personality because yeah I, I think so. a lot of people benefit friends, from it me, me, and I try not to be that person, but I know, I know I've done that before. Oh, so that's why sometimes if I cancel on plans, it's not at all about the people I'm canceling on. It's about I'm super afraid that I'm going to ruin their day. I'm going to go change my water cup and give this kind of a chance to dry. Having a lively chat this evening? Yep. That's nice. I like it when the chat's lively. It really does start to feel like hanging out when people are chit chat. Well, I'm trying to do other things. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do other things and I'm still not feeling well. So I know, I'm sorry. I do appreciate it, but I know it's not necessarily what's best for you. Okay, let's find where I can pop out that chat.
really take the, the <laughs> thumbs downs too much to heart um, unless they like outnumber the thumbs ups because like on the one hand YouTube doesn't care whether it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down it's engagement and that's really awful when it's on videos that are uh, perpetuating hate speech or racist ideology um, but when it's just somebody who's like having a bad day and they leave a casual dislike you know like it doesn't it's still engagement so it doesn't really hurt my feelings or I try not to let it hurt my feelings plus there's like no pleasing everyone the yellow peeking out from the background is a nice touch so what I recommend if you're gonna do that is and you can do it several different ways but one of the ways that's really really nice is the um, where you're letting the, the colors optically blend so you apply your l yellow layer and then you put your blue layer on it and it blends optically I mean of course you can also mix your yellow and your blue together and it gives you a really nice they uh, a really nice green like I'll show I'll show you because I, I want it anyway or I'm going to need it because I'm gonna want to go in these are they're really pretty and maybe I should just leave them like that but you know me I never leave well enough alone and also with the phthalo so that's too much phthalo so let's do the reverse let's mix it in here so you see we end up with this really nice green and it feels like a really fresh green so I've been really enjoying like um, yellow and phthalo mixes they pay pink peak time incentives of anywhere from a buck to five, but sometimes you just sit in your car for a half hour in a busy spot waiting for them to assign you a delivery. Wow. Too many people already dashing. You know, I, f I feel like, sincerely, I feel for you. And I wonder like how many of these delivery businesses are just like, because they only pay you when you, they don't, they're not paying you for your time. They're only paying you when you're actually running a delivery. So like, yeah, they'll just take on anybody who applies and then nobody's getting enough work. You know what? I, I don't mean like anybody, anybody. I mean, they, they take on um, anyone qualified who applies. There's and no then exactly, except for the employees that creates, I mean, they don't care, but it creates a bad situation because you're never earning enough money. work for the VA answering questions from veterans. When I don't work, I shut down and I talk to no one. I get that, Indy. And that's, that's like, that's a really rough way to live too. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, no, no. Why, you giving me the troll look. He's giving me the troll look right now with the, with the Cajun food. From, from BA. Ah, look, I usually like Chris a lot, okay? He's very analytical. I actually really like very analytical people. He tends to be very critical of the things he's consuming. I respect that. But the watching him make Mrs. Chase's gumbo, and A, he attributed it to Emerald Lagasse, and B, he thought it was jambalaya, and C, that man tried to put tomatoes in gumbo. I was just having, I was just not having it. Not at all. And then Sola was way too generous with his score, in my opinion, because if you'd had anybody from Louisiana eat his gumbo, I don't know that they would have given him a what. I, ah, too much paint. He, he got like an 86, right? No, Something like that. Got he got a B. Yeah, I think he, he, didn't a even, he didn't even do a roux. Yeah, okay, so this is cool to the touch. It's not surface wet. I think I can get away with doing some pink in there. I don't know. I guess like I care a lot about how Louisiana is represented and how our food is represented because you have a lot of, sorry, I'm trying to move the chat so I can, uh, I keep grabbing the wrong thing so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, and then it refreshed the chat. Yay. Anyway, I care a lot about it because you have a lot of places that 
do it here in Nashville, but it doesn't taste authentic and it's not good. And then people think Louisiana food isn't very good or you have, or they just think it's like not what it actually is. It's very inauthentic. Um, and then I, I want to say this really carefully. We watch a lot of cooking shows. We watch uh, BA. We watch Good Eats. We watch You Suck at Cooking, America's Test Kitchen. We watch that guy from Australia who makes ramen. We watch Wolf Pit. We watch, a, we watch Food Wishes. We watch who else? I mean, Weird Explorer has been making... Oh, yeah, J.A.S. Townsend. We really watch a lot of food stuff on, on YouTube. Um, and my number, number, number one gripe is that when they cook Louisiana food, they don't bring... It's never somebody who's from Louisiana, okay? So, like, this is bothersome to me because we definitely need the jobs, and it's a cuisine, and... To me, it's a good opportunity to hire and lift up somebody who has that background and is from that area. And I'm definitely biased because like I've been pitching a Louisiana cookbook for a while and one of the, one of the re requests that was made of it was that Louisiana was too specific, could we generalize it? But yet there's all these people on different food shows who are attempting to cook food from Louisiana and they're not from Louisiana and they don't know what they're doing and they're misrepresenting the food and they're kind of misrepresenting the culture. <laughs> so like my big beef is like I would rather you bring somebody on as a guest or um, like maybe somebody who went to one of the cooking schools in Louisiana or who's trained in that cuisine or grew up eating and cooking that cuisine to actually show people how to cook it instead of well, I can't get that saturated enough. Instead of, instead of like you guessing at how to cook it, cook it and being wrong. And like Chris wasn't trying to teach us how to cook gumbo, but it's just, he called it jambalaya. He didn't even feel how much liquid was in the food. And jambalaya is a very different dish. And then there's also big regional differences, like the jambalaya in Joseph's part of Louisiana, which is only like 40 minutes away from my part of Louisiana, is way drier. And jambalaya, where I'm from, is New Orleans style, and it's got tomatoes, and I actually don't like it because it's very gummy, but that's a personal preference. So, you know, my frustration with this is coming from like I wish these jobs were going to people who were from Louisiana who know how to do this let them champion their own food and you know if it was like 50 50 people from Louisiana and people not I would be cool with that but it's never people from Louisiana Yeah, I, we, I agree with Heidi. We do have um, a unique cuisine. So that's also part of my frustration. Like, I'm going I'm to get myself in trouble. So it's Cook's Kitchen, right? Which started out as America's Test Kitchen. Is that it? Cook's Kitchen is a... It's, America's it's an Test offshoot. Kitchen is, yeah, Cook's... America's Test Kitchen is the, the place, the facility. And Cook's Kitchen is one of their shows... Oh. Yeah, okay. So the hosts are, like, these two blonde ladies. One's from Ohio, one's from Minnesota. And, like, when they start talking they about... Actually, I thought you were... You were no, like, they really are Idaho or Nebraska. Okay? okay? It, they really are from up north. Sure. And so every time they're talking about Louisiana food, I always have to make a lot of noise. Because those women act like salt and paprika are, like, a well-seasoned dish. And I'm over here, like, crying. And I don't even like to cook. I mean, I, I like to cook, but I like to eat more than I like to cook. Cooking is a function of eating. I'm an aspirational cook in that I aspire to eat more food. Well, 
they're not judging food. They're teaching people how to cook food based on recipes that other people in their kitchen have developed. Mm, it is very approachable. Which I think it is, is very approachable. approachable. I like that. I just, man, like, like they, in their background shots, they always have all these people cooking. So in my opinion, they could have someone not blonde and white present the recipe sometimes. Anyway, I know that's probably a little bit controversial. But. I don't even know what their credentials are. I don't I either. They're established in some manner. I actually don't know. Um, they may just be decent TV personalities because that's some cooking shows. It's not necessarily that the person is such a good cook. It's that they have a personality that works well for it. I mean, I enjoy You Suck at Cooking, but none of his recipes are like, <laughs> groundbreaking in any capacity which is great for people who um are looking to learn new recipes what was it the chef john made it, he made a gumbo too and it was not a gumbo remember i was making a lot of noise about that too see you figured out how to get me in a better mood and talking because as soon as you bring up southern louisiana let's not call it southern food i mean it's technically the south but it's different. Like, remember when we went to ALAAC in New Orleans and we had, there was some, we were tabling and so many people were like, yeah, we ate real Louisiana food. And then the, the restaurant they mentioned, it's a Southern chain and it's like chicken and biscuits. Chicken and biscuits is not really, I mean, we eat it like Popeye's obviously, but it's not like what you would think of as like a Louisiana staple. He has a cookbook out now, too. I wanted to get the cookbook from Devin. Yeah, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to rag on him. I should have, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to sketch in the leaf shape so I can kind of, get a more nuanced leaf shape so I'm still I'm doing a tighter treatment on the leaves now but they're still not like super tight and I once this dries if the color saturation is good I'm just going to leave them as they are I might do um the center vein and maybe a little white but I don't want to work it a whole lot more than that I mean, I, I know I'm kind of a fine one to talk about these things because Asian food is one of my, and I, I mean, I'm not saying like they're all the same. I enjoy eating a lot of different Asian foods, so I take a lot of cooking inspiration from that. But I would never get on YouTube and pretend like any of the abominations I'm making are the real deal. Right, like it's a bad misrepresentation of the food. And it's really hard to find good Chinese food in like Southeast Louisiana, for example, because even the restaurants that used to be more authentic, they were basically forced into changing because the demographic wants what they think of as like Chinese food, but it's really just like American sugary fried stuff.
toe with the leaves, these leaves down here. I'm going to go in with a much stronger application of the yellow. So we can also, if we wanted to, we could go into those with that as well. Oh, and I want to be picky about it because some of these leaves have a really nice amount of shadow going on. So I don't want to change that too much. Yes. Did you take them Nope. It was done at Cheekwood. Which is one of, it might be the only, but I don't think it is. Because I think the Hermitage has um, a garden. But it's the big botanical garden here in Nashville. It was originally owned by the Maxwell family. Like Maxwell Coffee. Part of my problem here is I've lost some of the pencils, so I'm trying to find them again. So I think it was Maddie who recommended it, um, but she's not in the chat today. But I started reading Golden Camley, like, actually I started reading it last night, and it is really, really, really good. And uh, I'm now three books in of what, like 16 books? <laughs> I guess I'm going to be reading it for a while. Um, there is some violence, like some graphic violence, so I can't, like, unilaterally recommend it to anyone the way I might recommend um I would say Bride's Tale, but Bride's Tale has some nudity that some people... Okay, well, well, what I'm looking for is a comic that is about different cultures that is, uh, teaches interesting skills as part of the comic itself. I really need... I thought I turned... I turned off Discord on my desktop, but I didn't turn it off on all my computers. Thank you. Oh, I thought you were, no, you just shut it. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted just to leave things as they are with our leaves and start doing the flower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go change out my water since it's a verdant shade of green and I'll be right back. Would you like some green juice? No. Just, oops, sorry about that. I'll just have to work carefully because we do have some wet areas. Mm. 
And I'm also going to dual wield so we can do our application and then really quickly blend it out. Okay, this is dry enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work petal by petal. And that's going to help me kind of keep my petals more distinct. And it's also going to give me time to blend it. I've, um, Crunchy has been really trying to push it. And the art looks really neat. For Dr. Stone, sorry. So what I want to do is I want to have some blended out areas and then some harsher direct application areas. And then where the opera is on top of the, uh, the sort of warmer yellow, we get this really, really nice orange color. I feel like I need to go back and read Vinland Saga because I feel like if I could just get past some of the violence... I would really enjoy it. I'm also trying to be kind of mindful of my mark making, even for areas I'm going to blend it out. I'm trying not to use, uh, I want to say inorganic marks, so I'm doing some stumbling effects. Hmm. Well, usually when I start a new anime, I'm willing to give it three episodes. And then if I have a friend who just like absolutely loves it, I'll usually <laughs> give it more than three. Like, um, I've been reading a side character's love story, and it's really cute. Volume 4 just came out, um, and it's about this girl. Well, it starts out with a girl, but it's really about a girl and a guy, obviously. It's a romance, but it does actually do both of their points of view. And it is about these two people who are, she's intensely shy, um, she just kind of fades into the background. She never speaks up for herself. She doesn't necessarily have a whole lot in terms of the manga. I don't even I can't even tell you if she has much of a personality outside of being shy because we don't know if she what she likes or what she's into, but she works at a grocery store uh, and is attending college and one of her coworkers there is this nice but very quiet guy and she has this huge crush on him and it's just about her kind of overcoming her shyness to reach out and make this connection to him and him kind of overcoming his own shyness and stoicism to allow her into his life and it's just very sweet and heartwarming and you end up cheering for them and also they're not like 16 they're in their she's in her early 20s but it's nice to have a first time love story about people who are not <laughs> teenagers. I mean, there's a lot of those. I'm not complaining about their existence, but you're spoiled for choice if you're looking for that. So, 
really, if you wanted to do more color, because Opera is a very light and very hot pink, you could go in with a Quin Magenta to add a little more color depth. You could go in with um, maybe even, an, well, it's so hot, I would think Quin Magenta would be the better choice. Maybe mix a little bit of um, like a red violet or a dioxine purple into your opera. Right? Tanner says I'll try any anime manga about grown-ups <laughs> because there's not necessarily enough. Yeah? yeah. Well, they have um, cells at work. Black is about an older guy who has cancer. Hmm. I didn't yeah. Is that an anime? No, it's a the manga. Yeah, not yeah I, huh, I feel that. You'd be lucky to get him to watch the manga. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's stuff like I think my mom would like, but she is vehemently against anything animated. She, but yet she'll watch the ugliest CG animated movies. But for some reason, she just doesn't really dig 2D animated stuff. Have you noticed that Shrek is charmingly ugly? Unlike all the other ugly animated I stuff. Actually, yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually kind of like the Shrek. I, that's just... what I just said. It's charmingly ugly, unlike everything else that was released around that time. Right? Too bad Opera Rose is so light fugitive. I'm curious, this is a Quinn Opera Rose, so I'm kind of curious if the fact that it's a Quinn Acridone would make it more light fast. It's too bad Kabocha isn't in here tonight. They would know. And then there's also Cells at Work and Friends, and then Cells Not at Work. There's like a whole bunch of like knockoff Cells at Work. That's right, yeah. Mother's Day is tomorrow. Huh. I don't know, it could be a generational thing too. with the like Disney but won't do any anime. All opera rose are a queen co Oh, it's that pink dye. That's what makes it so fugitive. See, I don't use a lot of Quinn Rose, um, partially because it scans really poorly. Um, it's beautiful in real life, but it doesn't, it ends up looking like a magenta when I scan it. And even with color correction, it'll blow the whole color gamut. So I usually just, you know, use a good sub. And also it's so light fugitive. More so than, in my experience, more so than other colors that I might find to be very light fugitive. I mean, shoot, it is so bright. It's so pink. I'm very tempted to break what I promised you guys and go grab a... I haven't tried the jelly pot gouache, but Tanner's wife, Allie, just got them in. So she might be able to tell us if they're any good. I don't know if she's had a chance to play with them yet. That's a dangerous question. Because <laughs> you're going to get um, kind of a divided answer on that. Okay. I mean, if it was a floral painting, you could. 
So this is PR 122, and this is Daniel Smith's opera. Where is your pigment info? This is a BV 10 in PR 122. So they actually added a blue violet to this one. And then this is bright rose. And this is BV 111 and AB 83. I've never heard of AB. And then this is Compos Rose, and it's PB27, PBK7. So there's a black in there, and then PR122. What I'm looking for, though, is a Quinn Magenta. And I know I have it in... Sorry, all y'all can see is my stomach, and it's probably doing that weird phasing in and out thing. Um... I know I have it in a tube. I would just have to dig for it. So give me a sec because this is so bright and so hot. We're losing any delineation. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to add one more color to it. A Quinn Magenta, let's see, PR122, so unless they don't add the dye to this, I mean this is BV10 and PR122, so I'm going to swatch it and we'll see how it differs from our opera. I think they're going to complement each other well though because this is almost the same color but it's a much darker tone. Oh I'm sorry. This one is a very very bright one too. A very saturated pink. I'm going to hopefully tone it down a bit, though, by cheating and adding in the Quinn Magenta. And I say cheating just because I promised you guys a rose in three colors. And I'm not trying to copy it perfectly. I'm not going for photorealism. A, that would take way longer than an hour and a half long online workshop. Oh, okay. See, I was thinking that would be a blue-violet. But that's probably too much time with Copic markers, because BV is blue-violet for Copic. I know I'm the worst. And honestly, uh, Quinn Magenta shades a little bit more. You can get a wider range of tones than Opera Rose. So you could do this with Quinn Magenta and it would probably serve you better. And I'm mostly just trying to capture the shadows so I'm not covering all of it. I'm keeping a lot of it kind of to the edges of the petals. Just to add some of that delineation that might have gotten a little bit lost. Yeah, it does 
look like the yellow shade for the magenta. They do work well together. Another nice thing about Quin Magenta is that it mixes really decent purples with ultramarine. I mean, I'm a big fan of um, using a tube purple, purple like a, a dioxine purple, because you get a really clean purple. But it makes for a really nice kind of more fuchsia color. Sounds like you had access to a lot of good stuff from an early age. Oh yeah, he talks a lot about um, older anime and lost media. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of that uh, opera and Quinn. And I'm just going to use it to just add a little bit of delineation in the yellow, just a little bit of shading to help kind of separate the petals from each other. Okay, and then what I want to do is for the, I'm going to go change out my water and then for the leaves, I'm going to go in with our phthalo blue and use that just to pull back in some shadows. And then I think other than the gouache, we're about done. So, mixing up a little bit more saturated version of the phthalo blue. Going to move the chat. And then I'm going to start, I think, with the background leaves. Now, all I really want to do... Is add just a little bit of detail. Not really a lot. And I'm just doing some shadow. That's still a little wet, so I want to be kind of careful around it. Hope, however you guys choose to spend tomorrow that your Sunday is happy safe and healthy Which 
try to be really careful over here because we have a lot of still wet areas. And I don't actually know how I feel about this piece, but I do know I'm glad we hung out together tonight. This definitely put me in a better mood. And even if I'm not 100% on this, I think my mom would like it and that's really who I was doing it for so plus I got to kind of shake up my routine a little bit which is good, it keeps you young. how the leaves at the bottom look so we'll call it a success so I want to give us a chance to dry and then you know I was sort of thinking about hitting it with some white gouache Maybe not. I have a tendency to kind of overwork things a little too much. And sometimes leaving things loose is where all the beauty can kind of come in. So while I was in, in Louisiana, I was talking about wanting to do a stream where we do poison dart tree frogs on Pasca, uh, sorry, poison dart tree frogs in Pasca on black paper because they come in such beautiful colors and the Pascas show up really nice on black paper. And my mom was like, I don't know, people aren't really going to want to see frog video. Something to that effect. And it was just like, man, you do not know YouTube. <laughs> people like frogs on YouTube. So that might be next week, kind of dependent on what's going on. And I haven't forgotten about some of the suggestions in prior streams I keep a a Google Doc where I kind of write down all those ideas Right? Frogs are cool. 
And it'd be fun to do something with frogs in Posca. What's nice about the internet is that even if like 99 out of 100 people think frogs are not cool, right? The internet allows all the 1% who like frogs to like hang out together. So even if it's not something everyone would enjoy, I think there's enough people who would like it that it's worth doing. Plus I like frogs, so there you go. Okay, I think, I'm thinking the gouache is not, the gouache, sorry, is not adding a whole lot to it. So I'm going to call it quits. You could, if you wanted, ink over it. You could ink over it with black or you could use a colored liner. Um, you could go over it with color pencil if you so desire, just to kind of tighten it up. It's really up to you. It's taking so long to dry that even if I wanted to ink it with something, it, we'd be sitting here for a while. Or I could go get the hair dryer, which maybe not tonight. So uh, I'm going to call it a night. I'm pretty happy with it. There's some things I really like about it. There's some things that I feel are not as resolved as I would like, but maybe if I slept on it, I might feel differently about it. Thank you, LaserCon. So, um... I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's live stream. It was good hanging out with you guys again. It's been a week. And um, hopefully I will see you guys again next Saturday, probably to do poison dart tree frogs with Posca markers on black paper. So um, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I hope you were able to stay happy and healthy. So thank you guys.